In this lesson, we're going to learn all about what grid maps are and how we can use grid maps in everyday life to help us find where things are located. Now, you might have seen some grids before. So, grid maps come from grids. Here's a grid book that you might use for maths. And over here, we've got a smaller grid. I'll zoom it in. And all a grid pretty much is, is a group of lines that go both horizontally, so across, and vertically, up and down. And they cross over each other to make a group of squares or rectangles. And when they do that, they make what is called a grid. Okay. So today we're going to look at a couple of different grids and I've got a pretty simple grid here to start with and with this grid we're going to learn the special parts that a grid must have or what we need to know about grids to use them. Now when we look at a grid there's squares that run along this way which are our, is our x-axis. The squares that run what we would call um, horizontally so across are uh, our x-axis. The squares that are on this side that run up and down vertically is what we call our y-axis. Now when we are trying to find something on a map, so say for example I have this star here in my grid map, I need to have labelled my grid to give um, some clear examples of where I can find the star. Now, we label the grid with something called coordinates. There's that word coordinates. Now, coordinates helps us to know where something is going to be on the map. So, I'm going to label my x-axis coordinates, these squares, along with some letters to show us. So, here's A. B, C, D, E, and F. And for my Y axis, I'm going to label them with numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now you can see with those coordinates, I've labeled them in line with the squares. They're not on the line, they're in each of the spaces of the squares. So we use the coordinates, the labelling of the grid, to help us find where something is. When we're reading it, we have to read the x-axis along first. So the star matches up with the letter C. So if I put a big C over here, and then we read the y-axis. Where does the y-axis match up with? With the star. Well, the star matches up here with the 4. So I'll write 4. So my coordinates, this word up here, for this star on the map is C4. I have used um, the x-axis and the y-axis to help me find the star. It is on C up this way and 4 across. So that is the position of the star on the map. Let's have a bit of a look at an example of what that looks like. Now, this grid map is a little bit different, but it still has an x-axis and a y-axis. Remember, the x-axis is the ones that go along the grid. We had them down the bottom before, but this time they're up the top. And the y-axis goes up and down vertically on the grid. They could be over here, or they could be on this side too. And remember, like we talked about, those coordinates are in the spaces of each one. They line up with the square. So, for example, if I wanted to find the police station that is over here in this square, I read my x-axis first, so they're the ones that go along first. So which one is it along? Well, it's in the D. And then I'd find my, oh, I'll write that coordinate down first, D. And then I find my Y axis and they are the ones that go, remember, up and down. So here, 
which one does it fit in here? Oh, it's in this row, and that's four. I put a comma and a four. Same as before, the coordinates for this police station on this grid map would be D4. We're also going to look at another type of grid map because sometimes grid maps also have their coordinates, see how I don't have any in yet, on the line. So in this grid map we're going to look at coordinates being on the lines. So again, we always have an x-axis and we always have a y-axis, but where their coordinates are written is going to change where we can find things on a grid map. So this time I'm going to use on my x-axis letters again, but this time instead of putting them in the space here, I'm going to make sure that I write my coordinate right on the line. It lines up with the line of the grid map. So let's have a look. Instead of putting it in the space here like that, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put it on um, the lines instead. So here's A underneath the line, not in the space. B under the line, C, D and E. Now if I've got them on the line for the x-axis, then I need to make sure they're the same on the y-axis as well. So I'm going to do numbers on the line. 1, 2, matching up with the line area. 3, 4, 5, and go right to the top 6. So now I've got a coordinate for every line. Oh, I forgot one over here. F. For every line of the grid map. So... Let's have a look with the star again. If I had a star sitting here, you'll notice it's on the lines this time, obviously because my coordinates are on the line, so my star is on the line. I would check my x-axis first. It's on B, so I'd write B first. And a comma and I'd check where it is on the y-axis, it matches up here with the number 2. So the coordinates for this star, where this star is located on the map, we would say is B2. This picture of this pirate map is the same. You can see the coordinates are on the lines, matching up with the lines. They're not in the spaces, they're on the lines for the numbers and the letters for the x-axis and the y-axis. So if we were going to try and find this pirate ship over here, it looks like a pretty impressive pirate ship. We read along the x-axis first. Which one does it match up with? Five. So I'll write that over here. Five. Comma. Needs to have a comma with the next one. And where does the pirate ship match up with on the y-axis? It comes over here to C. So the coordinates for this pirate ship on this map is 5C. We're going to look at one more grid map today. Now, you might have been thinking before, why do we always have to go the x-axis way first before we go the y-axis way? Well, it's actually really important. It wasn't just something I was telling you to do. There's a reason for that. And I'm going to show you that reason by using a grid map with both the x-axis and the y-axis have letters. So this time I'm going to do it in the spaces. And I'll go A, B, C, D, E, F, one for every square for my x-axis there. Now sometimes on grid maps the x-axis coordinates, those letters, can be the same on the y-axis. So if I label those coordinates as well in the gaps A, B, C, D, E, F, it could get pretty confusing if we don't have a system for which way to go first. Now, here is the reason why we have to go x-axis first. If I had the star this time in, let's go, this box up here. 
If I read the x-axis first, and this is the right way to do it, I can see it is in the coordinate of E first. So I'd write E, comma, and then the y-axis it is in D. Now I have to do the x-axis first because if I don't and I do the y-axis before the x-axis, things could get pretty confusing because let's have a look. If I do the y-axis, the star would be D and then the x-axis, E. I'll put a comma there. Now that's given me two completely different spots on my grid map. E, D coordinates and D, E. So it's very important that we do the X axis first and then the Y axis when we are writing our coordinates down. Because when we read grid maps and everybody that reads grid maps all around the world, you go the X axis first, which would be E, and then the Y axis, which is D. So this one here would be right and this one would be incorrect. So let's have a look at this last example and that might show us how it's really important to make sure that we read the x-axis first along this way first before we do the y-axis. Now if I had given my friend this map here and I wanted to tell them where the lighthouse was located, well we can see the lighthouse is here, I'd have to be able to give them the correct coordinates so that they could find that place. Now I know that it's important to go x-axis first. So let's see where the lighthouse matches up with. Six. So I'll write six down. And a comma. And then with my y-axis, where does the lighthouse match up with? Oh, it's here on the two. So my coordinates with the lighthouse would be 6, 2. Now, if I didn't read the coordinates correctly and I went Y first and then X axis, things would get a bit confusing because if my friend was trying to find the lighthouse and they went Y first, here would be 6, which would match up with this 2 here. And if we draw a line to where they would meet, we'd find there that that's not where the lighthouse is at all, is it? The lighthouse is all the way down here. And my friend wouldn't be able to find the right location because they haven't read the x-axis first and then the y-axis. So remember, when we're giving coordinates, we're writing coordinates or we're reading them, the first letter that we write is, of course, or the first number or coordinate is the x-axis. And the second one that we write after the comma is the y-axis. Oh, I'll just fit it in there. Great learning today, guys. Well done. Give yourself a big thumbs up.